Do you agree with that, or is it just the best man for the job? I, I agree with both statements. I think it should be our best against your best. If you're a, whatever nationality you are, you play for that country. And I think it should be the same with a manager. But actually, when we get to a point where we are, if we haven't got a manager that's good enough to take that role, it's not a rule in football that the manager has to be the same nationality. I believe that as a patriotic Englishman. I think an Englishman should manage England. But actually, if the Englishman or the English lady, whoever's out there, isn't the best person for the job, then you get the best person for the job. The fact that he's German doesn't help either. I mean, there's been foreign and then there's been, you know, the rivalry between England and Germany, the history of it. If that was reversed, there's absolutely no way that Germany would employ an England manager. But actually, we've got to the point, I think, with this FA now, in this last international break, Lee Carsley showed that he's not ready for the job, both on the field and off the field. The press conferences, the way that the team played and was set up against Greece to start with. I think that it's just kicked the FA into action to make a decision that they were probably hoping that they didn't have to make. If Thomas Tuchel was always going to be the plan, if he was always going to be the man for the 18-month contract, why not give him it before these Nations League games? Why now? Why, I question the timing. The timing is after the international break where there's so much bad news stories coming out, so many questions have been asked rather than answers during the last international break. They've had to do it. They've had to react. And if he was always going to be the man for the job, why not do give him it six months ago? I do have uh, the fact file here of uh, Thomas Tuchel, and this is all the things that he has won. Uh, he's, he's managed Borussia Dortmund. They, they got a cup win, uh, the DFB Pokal. They won that. Paris Saint-Germain, of course. They won uh, a number of things with PSG. Chelsea, of course. Champions League winners, Super Cup winners. Uh, the Bayern Munich won the Bundesliga. He was the best FIFA football coach of 2021. So this is the this is the fact file for Thomas Tuchel. If we were to look English, we've got no English manager, Neil, that could possibly compete with that, have we? Well, I love following my country, England, and I wanted an elite manager. England have appointed an elite manager for elite players. When was the last time we had that, right? Let me know any of these that are elite managers. Gareth Southgate, Roy Hodgson, Stuart Pearce, Fabio Capello, yes, maybe, but his communication, his English was awful. Steve McLaren. I for him. Definitely wasn't. Steve McLaren, now Sven Goran Eriksson. So you're going back to Sven as maybe the last elite manager England have had. Tuchel is an elite manager. His personality is great. Cannot wait to see how he gets himself on that. Yes, the whole Germany England thing. I get some fans will be upset about that, but I reckon England have just appointed one of the best coaches they could have done out there. So I'm really excited what, what he can do. Could have done without the World Cup being over there in America, in, in Mexico. I think the climate won't help us. If that was in Europe, I'd have thought, cool, we've got a great chance. Um, but yeah, I think great appointment. Great appointment. Uh, you were there, Paul, in the camp. You were selected to be the number one goalkeeper for the World Cup under Sven. You were also in the camp around it with Fabio Capello. What was that like and received by the players when you got the first foreign managers in? And what was the difference between Sven and Fabio? Sven could speak fluent English, Fabio couldn't, and he used it to his advantage when he didn't want to speak to you. Um, the, the language barrier was clearly there. With Sven, it was very much like having an English manager because he was so fluent in his, his second tongue. It's, you know, we're very lazy as English people. Quite often we expect everyone to speak English, and you look at the amount of foreign managers and coaches that come into our game that speak fluent English better than some Englishmen and women. So the, the, the language barrier is a real problem with Fabio. Um, his communication skills, his, his man management. Listen, you don't have to be the best coach in the world to coach England. It, it gets to me when people say, oh, we need the best coach in the world. You don't. You need the best manager in the world. What's the best coach in the world going to coach the best players in this country in three days before a game? You don't get all week with players. You don't get a season with players. You don't get the time to mould them into a player. You need to be tactically aware of how to set up a team to beat your opponents. And Tuchel's proved he can do that. He did it to Pep Guardiola in the Champions League final. So he can set up a team. He's tactically aware. You look at the things that he's won. His man management skills. You look at the, the players that have played for him. There's not many noises that come out of his teams, out of his squads, that players are not happy with him, that didn't like him. He speaks well. He's not afraid of making big decisions. And like Neil said there, he's got all the credentials, everything that the FA wouldn't want. You know, normally they've gone out now and gone and got a manager that wins things, will make decisions, will speak his mind in the press. He's not going to say things to keep everybody happy. He's not going to keep, you know, everybody nice and sweet and the, the, everything going on smooth. He'll make big decisions. He'll make, he'll upset people, but he'll actually make decisions for the better of the team. And you look at the way that the team was tactically set up against Greece and Finland 
I mean, the tactics couldn't have been any different. There was no kind of thought or process behind it. You've got a manager there who's very, very tactically aware and he'll set that team up to be able to win games. I think that's what they're thinking is, giving them the 18-month contract. It's short-sighted. It's as far as the end of the World Cup. That's Look, we've employed a manager with this group of players. We want to have a real go at winning this tournament. We'll deal with the rest after it. But again, I don't get the timing of it. So the Nations League, they're in Group B. The level of opponents in the Nations League is not where they want to be. They need to go to Greece and win by two goals and then they beat the Republic of Ireland at home. Unless there's personal reasons, why wait till January? He's got a couple of games now in November against Greece and Republic of Ireland. What's he going to do? Is he going to sit in the stand? Is he going to be sat on the bench? I mean, people are going to question who's picked the team. Where's he going to be? The whole timing around it, just, just get him in now and let him start now and let him have a look at these two games. Uh, there have been times under the management of Gareth Southgate, I've always thought this, where, you know, you did it earlier where you went through the starting eleven for Liverpool and Chelsea and you said we'd have this player, that player, whatever. Um, England in the past have played the big nations where you probably would have six or seven of the opponents in the starting eleven for England with the greatest respect to some of the England sides gone by. Now that's not necessarily the case because England are really good at producing I've always thought England have been punching way above their weight with the standard of footballers that they produce and it's only getting stronger and stronger at youth level but coaching level we seem to be lacking in bringing in managers English managers who can who can manage at an elite level what's why is that Neil why, why do you think that is Premier League Premier League our, our, our domestic league is one of the it's the biggest league in the world and it attracts players from, and coaches from all around the world, some of the best. So the English managers don't get the chance to manage at the top of their own domestic league. You go around Europe and the rest of the world and they've got their own nationality managers at the top end of them leagues. That's just the way it is. Uh, and that's why the English managers struggle. What is it, Eddie Howe? One of very few English managers that's got a team in, in the Champions League. Not, not many others have. I don't even know if, if any others have. So you're thinking, well, they don't win things, England managers, in our own country. So it makes it harder to then go, are they really elite managers, coaches, compared to a Tuchel who has? Does this, just quickly to wrap this up, what about the pressure then? Because now England are have got a, a, a German at the helm. Does that mean that we lack the patience that we would necessarily give an English manager? Or he's just betting in, we've got to give him time? Is this now an instant result? He's got to, he's got to win the, the fans over pretty quickly, Paul. Otherwise, we'll be hounding him out. Well, that's what he's been brought in for. He's been brought in for success, what previous managers haven't had. We've got to finals, semi-finals, quarter-finals, but never got it over the line. He's made no secret of the fact. Listen, if he's a long-term appointment, he signs a four- or five-year deal. He signed an 18-month deal to take us to the World Cup, and let's see how it goes from there. The stigma of him being German, the, the, the rivalry between the two, that will always be a stick that's used to hit him with if things don't go the right way in the media. And that's, that's just the fact, and that's what it is. It, this could either go very, very well for England, or if it doesn't go well... It will, we, you know the headlines now. I mean, I was, you laugh, but I was reading some of the German media this morning um, and you can see what some of the German papers are saying. They're actually making quite light of it that England have got a German manager predicting that England will meet Germany in the World Cup final and Germany will win on penalties with the ball that hits the crossbar and goes over the line. So they're actually tongue-in-cheek. They're, 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 they're taking the mick a little bit. But actually, it would, as Neil says, we've got one of the best managers and is an elite manager. This will be something that England have wanted and worked really well or the obvious will happen and the criticism will be there. But that comes with the, the, the territory. As well as being England manager, you have to be a politician as well. Look at the way the press are and look at the questions that they faced. No more evident than last week with Lee Carsley in front of the press. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, that's the guy's take on Thomas Tuchel. I will finish, actually, because we do have some odds on uh, the winner of the 2026 World Cup already. France, Spain, uh, our favourites at seven. Brazil and England... Our second fabs at 7.5.